What were you doing during the huge storm a few weeks ago? I have a friend who said that she was going to clear out the understairs cupboard and hide in it until it was all over. Another has a wonderful view of the Bristol Channel from her window and she spent the, ga- the day gazing out of the window, mesmerised by the ever-changing skies and the force of the wind and the waves. Still others I know put ear plugs in to block out the sound of the wind, while someone else, for some reason that I'm not quite sure of, stood out in the wind and the rain and the hail to, I don't know, I guess feel part of nature. Others, such as those who are homeless or who were travelling to or from work, wouldn't have had any choice but to be out in it. And that must have been terrifying. The natural thing for all of us when faced with a storm is to want to seek shelter. If it's a physical storm, then you want to be safely under cover, away from the wind and the rain. If it's an emotional storm, then you want people around you who will love you and protect you. On this Mothering Sunday, uh, a mother is the obvious analogy for many, but it could be another family member or a friend, someone who knows you and loves you just as you are and is a safe haven in the storm that you are facing. If it's a spiritual storm, then we need to turn to Jesus. In the famous I am passages in John's Gospel, we know the the, the really well-known ones like I am the light of the world, I am the bread of life, I am the good shepherd. And we know the story of the shepherd leaving the 99 sheep out in the field to go and find the one sheep that was lost. And he brings that sheep home and and is rejoicing. But what does he bring that lost sheep home to? He brings the sheep to himself. Because he is also the shelter that keeps the sheep safe. Jesus says, I am the gate to the sheepfold or the doorway and he puts his life in danger to protect the sheep from the wolves or the thieves. In those days when the sheep were safely in the pen the shepherd would lie across the entrance to the pen to guard them at night and any wild animals or thieves would have to get past him first before they could get to the sheep. Jesus was reminding his followers that they could find their safety, their sanctuary, their shelter in him. So what does that mean for us practically today? A shelter can be a place of refuge from the storm. It can be a place of rest and recuperation. And once rested and ready, it can be the place that sends you out on your way again. So a shelter can be a place of refuge. Picture here. A while ago, I saw a beautiful image of a pigeon shielding her young by spreading her wings over them and a swan protecting her cygnets beneath her wings. 
It reminded me of the passage in Matthew chapter 23, verse 37, where Jesus said, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who kill the prophets and stone those sent to you. How often I have longed to gather your chicks together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings. But you were not willing. Jesus had entered into Jerusalem in triumph uh, the, the week before and during the week that leads to his crucifixion. He goes head to head with the Pharisees and the scribes who say all the right things, but they don't live it out. And he just yearns to protect the children of God, but they reject him. Or in Ruth chapter 2 verse 12 we read, May the Lord repay your work and may you receive a rich reward from the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wings you have taken refuge. Ruth has left her homeland to return to Bethlehem with her mother-in-law, Naomi, and Naomi's kinsman, Boaz, has seen Ruth's kindness and reassures her that God gives her refuge beneath his wings. Jesus is saying that God, like a good parent, envelops his children in safety, offers refuge, the sanctuary that we need when life is tough. Like a, a ship coming into harbour, after the ferocity of a storm. So God is the harbour and Jesus is the entrance that protects the ships within. And when all around is chaos and the storms of life are beating down upon us, we find our safety, our protection, our peace in the shelter of our loving God. A shelter can also be a place of rest and recuperation. Once we've entered into that shelter or that place of safety, then we can relax, we can rest, we are safe. The sailors on the beleaguered ship can stop and relax. The person running from the storm can catch their breath and we, when caught in the storms of life, can lay it all before our Heavenly Father and rest and breathe in his love and healing and peace. We can rest by those green pastures and the still waters that we read about in Psalm 23. We can take the promise of Jesus when he says, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Matthew 11, verse 28. And God promises that rest Again, in Jeremiah 6, verse 16, this is what the Lord says. Stand at the crossroads and look. Ask for the ancient paths. Ask where the good way is and walk in it. And you will find rest for your souls. Sometimes the struggles of life are just too much and we need to stop and rest in the presence of God and be at peace. Like a mother holding and soothing her distraught child in her arms until they relax and sleep, so God cradles us in his love and care as we rest in him. But a shelter is also a place of sending. When the storm has died down, the ship needs to set sail again from the harbour to continue on its journey. 
When the torrential rain has stopped, the sheep need to move on from the sheepfold into a new field to feed on fresh grass. And when we have sought refuge from the storm and rested and recharged, God sends us out again to live for him and to tell others of his all embracing love. I don't know how you felt after lockdown, entering into the world again, having been at home for so long. I found that it was one thing to go out for a walk, but being in, in front of or with crowds of people again was, was totally different. It was really unnerving. It would have been so much easier just to stay inside the safety of my home and hide in there. But that's not healthy. And though home might be our sanctuary or shelter, we need to engage with the real world around us. God has called us to live for him and given us each a task to do. And we need to go in his name and do that task. But he doesn't send us unprepared. In our time of shelter and rest, he also equips us and sends us out in the power of the Holy Spirit. Today, and in all that we will do in the coming weeks, May we find ourselves under the shelter of his wings. May we find rest for our souls. And may we, powered by the Spirit, go out in his name to lead more people to the God of shelter. Amen.